Hey everyone, this is Jim Hogan, and in this video, we're gonna talk about real and personal property. Stay tuned. Let's start by comparing real and personal property. Personal property is defined also as a chattel or just the term personal T. And personal property is anything that's movable. So cars, trucks, furniture, equipment, stocks and bonds that you own, mortgages on property, leases on property are all considered to be personal property. And personal property, generally speaking, is transferred by a bill of sale. For example, when a home is sold, the personal property that might be included, such as a washer, dryer, refrigerator, would be transferred from the seller to the buyer by a bill of sale. Now, real property, of course, is the land and anything that's attached to it. So when we think about real property, some other terms are realty and real estate. And real estate or real property is anything that's immovable, the land and things that are attached to it. And real property is transferred by a deed. And we'll be talking a lot in these real estate videos about deeds. And what I want you to know right now is that a deed is signed by the grantor. The grantor is the giver of the deed. The person receiving the deed from the grantor is the grantee. And in this video series, you're going to see a lot of terms with the suffix O-R and E-E. -E. And what I'd like you to remember is that the person whose name ends in O-R is always the giver. The person with E-E -E is always the receiver. So the grantor gives the deed, the grantee receives it. We'll be talking about lessor and lessee. That's the lessor, the leasor, the landlord, and the lessee, the tenant. We'll be talking about the optionor and the optionee, and the payor and the payee, and the mortgagor and the mortgagee. There's many, many terms and the OR defines who's giving the document, the EE defines who's receiving that document. Now, when we earthlings talk about real property and we buy a property, let's say we buy a home, uh, we think of ourselves as having the surface rights. But unless there are some limitations, and by the way, there almost always are, but unless there are some limitations on our ownership, uh, we also can be said to own the air rights, the sky above, and the subsurface right, the mud below. Uh, and this concept that when you buy a piece of property or own a piece of property that you own upward to the sky and downward to the center of the earth is known as the legal concept of land. Now again, there are oftentimes many restrictions or limitations on our rights above the property. For example, zoning will oftentimes limit the height of the buildings that we could, uh, we could build or we don't always get, in fact, most instances, we don't receive mineral rights and oil rights to property. But again, in the ideal situation, when you own a property, you own upward to the sky and downward to the center of the earth. Now, the earth's surface can be changed by a couple of different things. We'll talk here about erosion. We'll also talk about accretion. Erosion is the tearing away of land due to natural causes. And back in the 1980s, what I call the Great Flood of Tucson occurred, where we had rain for quite a few days in a row. And over a weekend, the banks of this Rieto River changed course, uh, and this building went into the drink. On uh, Friday of that week, and by the way, this transaction was in escrow, and on Friday of that week, all the papers had been signed but not recorded. On Sunday, the building went into the river, and on Monday, the buyer said no deal, and the lender had not funded the transaction and, uh, and would not fund it. So what do you think? Had the transaction closed on Friday when the papers were signed, or had it not closed because the documents were not recorded? The answer is that closing had not occurred. Erosion is sometimes also referred to as the avulsion. And in fact, there's a slight difference in the definition. Erosion, erosion is sometimes referred to as the gradual tearing away of land due to natural causes, whereas avulsion is a rapid tearing away. And, and arguably, the erosion along the Rito where the building went into the drink actually would have been avulsion. But 
uh, the examination may not make a big difference between them. Uh, they could refer to one or the other as erosion or avulsion. Now, the process of increasing land due to natural causes is called accretion. Uh, so uh, this picture is from Hawaii, where on the Big Island of Hawaii, the Kilauea volcano is constantly uh, putting lava into the ocean and building up the land there. Another uh, natural process would be occurring in the Mississippi River Delta uh, down south of New Orleans, where all of the silt and sand from the Mississippi is being deposited in the Gulf of Mexico. That buildup of land would be called accretion. Now, land is also said to have certain physical characteristics. This one may seem pretty simple and straightforward, but it has a fixed location. It doesn't move. Now, again, it may, may seem pretty trite, but in reality, it's important because of the fact that there's another concept relating to land, and that's the concept of heterogeneity. And heterogeneity means that no two parcels of property are exactly the same. So whether if I'm standing here and, and I'm standing here, I probably have a different view depending upon, upon where I am. And this concept of heterogeneity has been looked at by the courts. And the courts have determined that since no two parcels of real property are alike, that a real estate contract has to have a proper description of the property. And later on in this video series, we're going to be talking about property descriptions. But right now, just keep in mind this concept of heterogeneity, no two parcels of real estate are alike. And that's it on real and personal property. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel. I hope to see you in our next video.